Last week, we talked about the story of David and Goliath, and this Sunday, we're going to continue and also conclude with learning more about David and just how awesome of an individual he truly was. Now, David ended up killing Goliath, which was a pretty big deal, and it was so big that a king by the name of Saul was really, really impressed and really, really wanted to meet this young man. And having met Saul, David just so happened to be introduced to his son, Jonathan. Now, in the Bible, there are many times where we witness their friendship. We are going to begin with chapter 18 in the first book of Samuel, and it picks up right where I left off. So if you don't have a Bible or you have a Bible of any kind, go grab it now and let's get started. After David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond between them, for Jonathan loved David. From that day on, Saul kept David with him and would not let him return home. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Jonathan sealed the pact by taking off his robe and giving it to David, together with his tunic, his sword, his bow, and belt. Wow! He felt such a deep connection that he was willing to give the clothing off of his back. That must be a pretty strong and bold feeling. Now... I wonder if you ever felt that way with somebody that you've gotten to know. Maybe you've met a friend who you weren't really friends with at first, but you felt this instant connection. You were just so comfortable and felt like you could be yourself and even share something that was quite valuable to you. I know, for instance, one of the biggest things that I've seen some of our kids at Wayside do is share their love for games. Ugh. Games are a big deal, and sometimes being able to just sit back and play those games together or swap those games or just talk about them, even playing with them, it creates this connection, this bond, and it's a very, very strong bond because it lets that kid know that they've met somebody else who has that same special interest. That's a big deal. We need friends, right? And it's fun to make friends, find friends, keep friends. All right, so we're going to keep going because it does not stop there. Let's keep moving along in the first book of Samuel where we come to yet another moment where that friendship between David and Jonathan is just incredible. I'm going to ask you to skip on over to chapter 19, okay? Here we go. Saul now urged his servants and his...
even know whether or not the coast is clear, that whether David can return and stay, or if David needs to escape and flee. And by doing that, Jonathan promises he will talk to his father and what he'll end up doing to give him a sign of warning. He will shoot three arrows out to a rock pile where David is hiding. And then he will send out a boy to bring those arrows back. If David hears him tell him that they are closer and on his side, then you'll know surely that the Lord lives and all is well and that there's no trouble and David can stay. He can remain with them. But if Jonathan tells that young boy to go farther, that the arrows are still ahead, then that means David needs to leave immediately. For the Lord is sending you away. The Lord makes us, keeps our promises to each other for he's witnessed them. So here we are again making a covenant, a pact, another promise for their friendship. As Jonathan swears, he is there to help and also protect David. Jonathan holds up his end of the bargain. He goes, he speaks to his dad, and it's not good. Jonathan returns and he shoots the arrows. All right. Back in that Bible, we're going to bump over to verse 41. And as soon as that boy was gone, this is the guy that's running for those arrows, David came out from where he had been hiding near that stone pile. And then David bowed about three times to Jonathan with his face to the ground. Both of them were in tears because those three arrows did not land in front of that rock. They landed on the other side. And in that pact, they said that if that were to happen, it meant that David needed to go. They were very upset, and they gave each other a very long hug, and they did say goodbye. At last, Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn loyalty to each other, and the Lord's name. The Lord is the witness of a bond between us and our children forever. Incredible. The display of affection, of friendship between these two, is so deep, it's so strong, and it's nice. It's nice and sometimes it's hard and it's difficult to have a friendship like that with somebody. It comes with its good and its bad, its triumphs and its challenges. But we all know that we can have that kind of friendship even with God right now. I know it's still tough today because we're not always able to hang out with each other. But you know what? We still think of each other fondly. We find other ways to connect. And that's a beautiful, wonderful thing and we should be grateful for it. So today's activity, you're going to need just a couple of items. You're going to need some dental floss. You're going to need some popsicle sticks. And you're going to need Q-tips. Last week we made a catapult, which was supposed to mimic sort of like the slingshot idea um, from David and Goliath. This time we're actually going to be making little bows, okay? And I decorated mine a little bit. What you're going to need to do is, with the help of an adult, is take your popsicle stick and have them use, preferably a knife, um, to cut out little notches on both sides on one end and to repeat it on this side too. It's highly suggested that you take your popsicle stick and soak it in some water for like about an hour. It'll help soften it because like a bow and arrow, that bow needs to bend a little bit. If I do that now, and bend it, it's going to stay, but chances are it could snap. This one's actually doing exactly what I needed to do without breaking. That's awesome. After you do that and you have those notches, again, with the help of an adult, because this can be a little bit tricky. It was tricky for Miss Sonia. You're going to take your floss and you're going to tie it around the one end, nice and tight, and bend it at the same time. This is when two pairs of hands could come in hand. Two pairs of hands could come in hand, ha ha. You're gonna bend it, and then you're gonna pull that really, really tight and tie it on the other end. After you have that done, with a pair of scissors, you're gonna take some Q-tips and carefully cut, okay? So you're gonna cut one end off, and it's gonna look a little like that. And then, this took me a little bit of practice, so let's see if I can perform this well for you. Okay. Oh my, let's see if we can get it to work. Ready, set. And then what you're going to do 
is use your Q-tip on your bow and you are going to shoot that bad boy across the room. Ready, set. Oh my gosh, it works! <laughs> I did it earlier and I had a couple good ones. I had a couple floppy ones too. So today, that is our activity for you to do at home. Super simple activity, super simple craft. Just the help of an adult to get a couple of those notches on, maybe extra hands to get the floss wrapped around. But honestly, this is really cool and really handy. And I think it's a wonderful symbol of that friendship between David and Jonathan. Even though he did have to flee, the fact that in the beginning, Jonathan gave everything to David. Remember, he gave him his robe, his tunic, his sword, his bow. That's incredible to just say, you know what? I like you so much and I want to be such close friends that I want to just give you everything. So I hope you have fun making this little activity. And if you need better directions, parents, by all means, let me know. I can certainly send you that link. It's not a big deal. Um, actually, maybe I'll even put it below in our, our video just so you can find it as well. Um, but you know what? Have fun. Decorate it. I, I just tried to put a little pattern on my end. Something simple. Um, have fun doing this, please. I, I, I really do hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Um, and with that, I'm going to say a quick prayer before we go. All right, so let's just, you know, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, give me a few minutes of silence, okay? Dear Lord, we thank you for the friendships we have gained over the years, over the weeks, months, days. Although times are different right now, and we might not be seeing our closest friends as often as we hope, we know that they are with us in spirit and that we have the ability to speak with them. Thank you so much for those friendships. They mean the world to us. And thank you for our friendship with you, O oh Lord, for you are always with us, no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, I hope you have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. God bless, and I'll see you later this week. Bye!